RPGs can be these massive, expansive games where you really dive into a role. Hmm? Hmm? However, you have to start somewhere. They all started somewhere. In this tutorial, I am walking through, I am building out a Dungeon Caller RPG. We're going to get a start scene, and I'll even have the levels loop continuously, or you can keep going and tile mapping out all the levels you dream of. All the assets, all the code, it's free or Creative Commons Zero. It is linked in the description, and let's get building. Let's go ahead and start where we left off here. Let's test it again and see what we need. Die, die, explosion. I know we're going to need a start scene, because if you remember, we spawn a second character. Oh, I hope it's here. We spawn a second player when we get, yeah, and that's a problem. We're also going to need to make sure we, well, don't have that object on this screen that player object so we're going to do a bit of cleanup we're going to build out a start screen and let's make our game over screen a bit better too all right so i'll create a new scene and as i get going on this i will be speeding it up because i believe in your ability to also create some really awesome scene let's have it be a entry village where the player it has spawned actually so to do that I'm gonna, well, you can see, click on this and hit Control D. And they auto named it level three. I'm gonna have it start level, or here, let's name it level zero. Perfect. Now I'll open this. And it is level zero. I'm gonna get rid of my spawners. And then we can keep the HUD and the player and the weapon because that can just move on through us throughout the game. Same with game manager, so perfect. But let's start now with the visuals. And again, I'm going to be speeding this up. Make sure though, when you search for sprites, you do select it over here. And in fast forward mode, I'll start by adding some grass. Here's my base layer. Here's the path. And oh, nope, there's the path. And let's add in some scary area for this entrance level. We're getting there. Uh, yep, trees are going to be the outline or the borders. Hmm. And that is my entrance level. So. Let's go ahead and add an overlay and use the main text. Let's use main text for a title. Yes, I know I'm creative. Um, zombie dungeon. Should we make it red? Ooh, spooky. Nope, I'm sticking with the white zombie dungeon. And then an overlay. All the way to the bottom. Uh, this one's fine. You just want it white. Now an overlay. There we go. It is over everything. Then we want to make it mostly transparent, maybe red. And let's see this sword on this. This is looking good. Zombie dungeon. Now let's see if the player, yep, we have an inspect. And so where we hide main text, we'll hide that. And then I'm gonna move the player. Let's go ahead then and move the, oh, not animation, player to the other side here. 
And then we need to add a door. Ooh, I'm 100% doing this one. And we're going to just add it as a sprite because we can have it be destroyed on load. And then since this is a wall, I'm going to need to erase this so the player doesn't collide when they enter the door. I'm okay with that. I'll just increase the size of the door and adjust it some. Love it. Awesome. And then let's add a bit of script to this to make sure it loads the next scene. Let's move the script and then open it. What we want to know here is if we've collided with the player. So actually, let's throw a box collider on our door. Box Collider 2D. And we would have this be a trigger because the player is going to run into it, but not be stopped by it. To that. And now on trigger 2D. Tag compare. And then what we're going to do is go over to our game manager and we're going to load load level. I don't want to do this. Let's just have it be public. I'm just going to. And we're going to need to add the uh, game maker to our door here. Uh, where is it? Dot load level. And that will load level one. We also want to put a check in here because now we want to make sure we never go back to this level zero. So what we can do there is we could either use the level's name or its build index. Let's let's actually get this added because with scenes, it's somewhat easier to see it first. So I'm on this first scene, build settings. Here we are, add open scenes. And I'm just going to pull it up like I just did. So now it's zero index. All right. And let's see how this goes. Boom. And I'm on this first level. Notice the character here because we haven't dealt with that yet. And <laughs> now there's three of us. What we're going to do then is since we know the level will be on, we can actually do this with how I am right now. But I think it would be more straightforward um, to do to uh, do this using the level count that we already have. So I'm going to get rid of that. And if I go up here, we're keeping track of a level right for the difficulty of moving to the next. We need levels set to zero, but first you'll notice the pink area on my tile map. What that is, is apparently I wasn't paying attention and put a non sprite image on my tile map. And so now it's having loading issues. So I'm going to go ahead and cut and fix that. Always make sure you're using sprite images when making your tile map. So I guess I'll be back in a second. We're like now in YouTube time. And back, make sure your line nine is a private int level and it is equal to zero. And let's keep going. So we can do something similar to that just to make our lives easier, honestly. I'm going to say current scene for this one. And we start at zero. And now back down here. To do this a bit of an easier way, if um, we actually want, so we have a level up here. Let's go ahead and do another variable and just name it like scene number. And it will make this a bit easier on us. So if um, we need the build index. OK, 
Okay, because now we will have three levels, right? The first level and so on. So if it does not equal two, we want current sand equal one. And then if it does equal, what do I call it? See number oh. And if it does, so else, we'll have equal to negative one. And then we just went right here, just like that, current scene. And so this way, when we're on level zero, current scene will be equal to one and we'll go up a level. Then when we're on level one, current scene will be equal to one and we'll go up a level. Then when we're on level two, uh, we'll get kicked back to that other level. Another thing I noticed, notice there's no spawners on our start screen on our first scene. So what we need to do there is make sure we don't get an error, make sure the computer doesn't attempt to work on our spawners. And how we can do that is, oh, we don't need to erase this, get rid of that. We can use an if and look at the length. And the reason this works is Unity, um, I'll get rid of this. Unity returns an array. And if there's none of our objects with a tag of spawner, it returns an empty array. So I'm checking the array with length. If that array has something in it, then this will run and that will prevent an error from occurring. All right, let's try some of this out. Zoop and zoop. Ooh, before we do, I'm going to actually move this door. We could also set the character's transform, but I like the flow of having it just already where we want. So I'm going to put this door over here. This is going to be a random structure. And so what I'll do then is start our player actually over here in the scary part. Wah. And that is awesome. Let me make sure to save this. Now on level one, if you haven't already done so, I, I was testing some things, um, but do make sure you've disabled player, weapon, HUD, because all of that is going to be coming from our level zero that we have made. Disable this, and let's give this a try. Oh no. Oh, there we go. I need to make that door larger, I guess. Ooh, ooh. Boom, yeah. Come on, ah. Boom, and we're back for more. And you can see our experience goes up. We could even have them start to drop items, things of this nature. And we have a pretty awesome game. I think I'm gonna add a door here. Hmm. All right, we have two last things I want to do before it feels really complete. And that is, remember on the HUD, we have this main text and red overlay. So I'm going to actually on Game Manager start, we have a player script. So let's use this to, again, use that red overlay and the main text for an entrance sequence. And here we go. I'm setting up for the red overlay. And I'm going to enable the text and then the overlay. And I'm going to go ahead and copy these because we also want to use them in a function. I might as well run. So here we go. I'm going to create a hide title function and hide this stuff after two seconds. And to do that, I just copied and pasted what I had up there. I'm setting these to false. The other thing I'm going to want is this red overlay. I copied that line and I want it to be visible. I want it to go over the screen when the player loses. We could also stop the player and all that, but I'm going to leave this as is. Save. Now, something else we want to do is we want to make sure that zombies are, we capped it at 10, remember? And we want to make sure this resets when level loads. Otherwise, it gets kind of wonky. So on scene load, right? So when we're loading a new scene, or we could also do it down here, load levels. What we want to do, though, is have zombie limit or zombie count. I mean, go back to zero. So I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to go way down here to load levels, and I'm going to make sure that my zombie count is going to be at zero. I also have a ton of health right now because I decided I wanted that. Let's go over here 
and we can either adjust my health. See, I wasn't kidding. Or the zombies hit power. I'm just going to try changing that to 200. Then I'm going to save all of this. And through the magic of the YouTubes, I already went through my scenes. Make sure you do the same. You do not want duplicate stuff. Ooh, I like this door sprite, but make sure to get rid of your player, HUD canvas, and game manager. Do so here as well. And then on player, also make sure we need to have this red overlay filled in here. Okay. I'm going to go zoop, and then say maximize on play and hit play. Oh, boom. Come on, zombies. We got this. Ow, ow. No. <laughs> uh, oh, wow, two snails. Ah, it wasn't that one. Oh my gosh, I'm losing a lot of health. Go. I wasn't even going to make it. Oh, game over. Awesome. And it came up. And now, though, we can still test. Thankfully, you get to cheat if you make the game. Boom. And it works. Awesome. We have a full-fledged zombie adventure. And now to make it a true dungeon crawler, one thing every dungeon crawler has, at least the ones that I play, are new weapons, upgradable weapons that you can pick up as rewards as you battle and fight your way to victory. So that's what I'll be working on next. Make sure to hit like, make sure to hit subscribe. It gives me warm fuzzies and makes the world better. Also, if you have questions, comments, jokes, or you want to tell me about your awesome project, make sure well to comment below.